Alright everybody out there, today we're going to be putting on the encoders to the servo motors, which in essence makes the motors servo motors. Here's a motor that's already done, it's got it right on the back. What's nice is it comes with a dog tag, or a dog gear, so it bolts directly the holes that are already on there, makes it really easy. So let's go get started, because this is going to take a while, and my phone doesn't have that much room. So here's one without the motor, or sorry, the encoder. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. This comes in the package. This is the encoder casing. Pop it open. You got your wheel here. This is the encoding wheel. And you got some foam, which eh, you don't really need. So, let's take this and this. And I've been trying not to get my fingers too much on these things because I don't know if that's going to cause a problem. So, first thing we're going to do is going to mount this on here. We take some of the pan head screws that come with the kit and we'll find one of the holes, dig it in there and then we'll get one of the other ones there we go, put that in there let's get those screwed on tight alright, one of the things that comes with it is this spacing tool you just line it up here uh, it's just so we can get an offset. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the wheel, trying not to put too many fingerprints on it, and you're going to put it with the longer side down so it rises up a little bit. Uh, it's like this one. It also comes with this Allen tool. And there's a little set screw which looks like it's probably a little too tight on this one, so give me a second and I will adjust that. should be in business now. Okay. Whoa. Okay, I like to press down a little on the metal part because it seems like the spacing tool probably gives it a little too much space. I noticed in the ones I put together it's like it's almost riding up on top of the sensor. So tighten it up. should be it. Slide the tool out. Now this is the business part too. Well, other than this, this is the actual sensor. Uh, go ahead and slide that in ever so carefully. And it should fit right around the ridge and be like right about there. Now one thing is I think that this kit, all these kits came with a couple of screws too few. Luckily I had some 440's that are about half inch that fit. Go ahead and mount that in there. And for this, we're going to switch over to a flathead. Right. Trying to rush. Oh, that's one thing. Yeah, you just noticed me do that. I noticed this one was put together. If you're using a flathead like I am right here, be careful that you don't over torque and slide down and smash one of these rings. You're going to have a bad time if you do that. You definitely don't want to break the ring. So I think these are like about 80 bucks a pop if you get them all a la carte. Okay. Ah, oh, see, I almost did it again. Okay. So this is what I like to do is I like to make sure there's clearance now. There should be clearance between the disc and the sensor. So hold up to a light source, but I can kind of tell right now if I spin the shaft, it's not rubbing. I'm assuming that's all I need to make sure that it doesn't do is rub. So let's go ahead and put this on there. Switch back to a Phillips. Alright. And this is where the flush screws go. And anybody feel free to correct me if I've done any of this wrong. I've never put it on an encoder until I bought this kit. I really didn't know what in a servo was. I just want something a little fancier than a stepper motor. So that should be it. Easy enough.